The Dallas Cowboys 2021 season will likely ride on the return to full health of their now franchise quarterback, Dak Prescott. But Jerry Jones must be convinced or else he wouldn't have opened up his checkbook to the tune of $126 million guaranteed. Never had any doubt that I wouldn't be here, that this deal wouldn't get done and be right for the both of us and be right for the organization and everybody invested. Our best chance to get where we want to be, which is over that trophy up, is manifest by signing Dak Prescott. But if this team is going to have any shot at winning the NFC East, they must improve on the other side of the ball. They brought in Dan Quinn as their new defensive coordinator to fix a weak unit from 2020. Quinn was the architect of the Legion of Boom in Seattle and has some new toys to work with, including their first-round draft pick, linebacker Micah Parsons, and former Pro Bowl safety Keanu Neal, who they signed in free agency. The Cowboys will also need healthier and more productive seasons out of Ezekiel Elliott, Tyron Smith, and Demarcus Lawrence. Will everything break right for the Cowboys in 2021? To be determined. But you can always count on one thing in the Big D. America's team always delivers the dramatic in one way or another. Our NFL training camp tour continues with the Dallas Cowboys as we welcome in our Patrick Walker. So first comes first, we need to discuss the health of Dak Prescott. Coming off that ankle injury that he suffered last season, is he 100% and how much of his ability to be a dual threat quarterback is affected by his injury from last year? Well, not only is Dak Prescott 100%, it's arguable that he's better than 100%. If you harken back to the fact that he uh, chose to have a second voluntary surgery, or I should say one voluntary surgery following that mandatory uh, surgery to reconstruct that ankle, uh, that second surgery was designed to strengthen the ligaments uh, and tendons in that ankle even beyond pre-injury. So it's arguable that that ankle is now stronger than the other one. So uh, looking at Dak Prescott in camp from a physical standpoint, he is absolutely back to machine status. He is doing rollouts in camp uh, and obviously his hands off the merchandise, hence the red jersey and pads come on today, Wednesday, but they're still not going to be able to put hands on him. But as far as going through drills, he looks very crisp. As far as running the offense, he's picking up right where he left off. As far as throwing dimes to players like Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb, uh, Ezekiel Elliott out of the backfield, see, you know, he's doing everything that the Cowboys have asked him to do and more medical staff is not concerned has not been concerned for months now Dak Prescott physically is ready to go Cowboys fans are so happy to hear that obviously Prescott signing that monster extension this offseason that's going to help as well all right now it was injury after injury last year it was tough to watch my husband's a Cowboys fan so I had to deal with that all that last football season the Cowboys lost their three best offensive linemen throughout the season as well is this an o-line that can become elite again in 2021 it begins at the edges. Uh, you're talking about Lyle Collins and you're talking about the health of Teron Smith. The beauty of it for the Cowboys is that Lyle Collins is not only back, but he's leaner and, and more muscular than he's been, uh, even when he was operating at what could be argued as a Pro Bowl caliber uh, play prior to them losing him in 2020. Teron Smith has no braces for the first time in a long time, and I'm not talking about his teeth. I'm talking about no brace on his elbow, no brace on any of his knees. Uh, his surgically repaired neck is doing well. Uh, so just as Dak Prescott is doing well physically. Teron Smith looks absolutely fantastic. If Teron Smith and Lyle Collins can remain healthy and on the field, that's going to protect and keep Dak Prescott upright. So then the question goes to the interior, and we're not talking about Zach Martin, a perennial All-Pro. Zach Martin, he's going to be there, uh, independable as always. But the Cowboys need to figure out the center position. Second-year talent Tyler Beattis, uh, he's going to take the start for now. But he's being challenged by Connor Williams, who is supposed to be the starting left guard, but is now getting some camp reps at center. Now, could that be? to challenge Beatus as starting center or could that be for backup center capacity because in the CBS Sports uh, top five camp battles to look for it for the Cowboys I listed Connor Williams going against Connor McGovern but now Connor McGovern is getting some of those starting looks at left guard so the Cowboys have a little bit of an interior question mark as far as what they are going to do going into 2021 if the edges stay healthy and they figure out the right combination of what to do on the interior besides Zach Martin Cowboys offensive line can absolutely return to elite form health is key and speaking of that let's talk about Amari Cooper for a second coming off of ankle surgery in January it seems like it was re-aggravated in May what's the latest you're hearing on Amari 
Amari Cooper underwent a minor anchor, uh, procedure earlier this offseason. A uh, little bit of a setback, not a big deal as far as the Cowboys are concerned. He did start on the physically unable to perform list along with Demarcus Lawrence. Uh, but Jerry Jones himself, and I've confirmed this by speaking with some sources, the Cowboys feel like both Amari Cooper and Demarcus Lawrence will return uh, as soon as shortly after the preseason game against the Arizona Cardinals. Obviously, uh, the preseason games don't necessarily matter to players, cornerstone players specifically, like Amari Cooper, Demarcus Lawrence, you know, multi-time pro bowlers, all pros. They've been there. They've done that. They know the playbook, uh, particularly in the Kellen Moore. There's no change there on the offensive side of the ball for Amari Cooper. So the Cowboys are just easing him back in. There's no rush. He will be ready with plenty of time before the regular season kicks off against Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the same goes for Demarcus Lawrence. So good news on the front of both Demarcus Lawrence and Amari Cooper. Yeah, Amari is coming off a career high 92 receptions last season. All right, let's talk year two for CeeDee Lamb. You mentioned him earlier. He had the second most receiving yards by a Cowboys rookie. Can we expect more of the same or even an expanded role for Lamb in 2021? You yeah, absolutely can. Back in January, I reported after speaking with sources regarding the game plan for CeeDee Lamb going forward was that, was that the Cowboys uh, are absolutely going to look to expand his role. He's not going to simply be primarily a slot receiver. They're going to move him around to the outside more often. You're going to see more goal routes from him, not simply the underneath routes that helped him become a record-breaking uh, rookie and breaking, obviously, Bullet Bob Hayes' record uh, for rookie receptions as a franchise player for the Cowboys. But CeeDee Lamb is going to get a bigger role. Now, here's where that gets interesting. We talk about Amari Cooper, he's going to get his reps. He's going to get his targets. That is not up for debate. Uh, but the question becomes against Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup, who has become a game-breaking receiver for the Cowboys, he's going into a contract year himself. He's going to be expected to step up again. Uh, he's a thousand-yard receiver. Um, but there's only one football to about Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, the return of Blake Jarwin, Dalton Schultz has stepped up to become a viable starter at tar tight end, Amari Cooper, and now Michael Gallup. But then you have CeeDee Lamb, whom the Cowboys absolutely want to, to get the ball more um, to in 2021 and beyond. So from a CeeDee Lamb standpoint, if you're a fantasy owner, you want him on your team. Uh, if you're the Cowboys, you just have to figure out how to make sure you're getting CeeDee Lamb the ball without shaving those reps from someone like Amari Cooper or Michael Gallup. But yes, CeeDee Lamb is expected to take a level up even over a groundbreaking season that he had in year one. What about Ezekiel Elliott? He struggled last year, posting career lows and rushing yards, only six rushing touchdowns. The biggest problem, looking from an outside perspective, was the fumbles, just fumble after fumble. Do you think Zeke is going to have a bounce back year? I do think he's going to have a bounce back here, and that's speaking objectively. If you look at the totality of his career thus far, uh, although he did have a career-high six fumbles, he also had six fumbles in 2018 when he won one of his NFL rushing championships, but also uh, titles, I should say. Also, keep in mind uh, that Ezekiel Elliott cleaned up that fumble issue in 2020. He only had one fumble over the last seven or eight games of the season, I dare say over the last eight games of the season. So that rash of fumbles, five of those six fumbles came in the first half of the season and only one on the back end. Um, so, it, arguably, you could say he's already cleaned up those issues, and I expect that to continue. Now you're looking at him from a physical standpoint. He's slimmer. Uh, he's leaner, but he has not lost the muscle mass. He's down to 218. Had some conversations with some sources who told me he got down as close to 215, 216, but before coming back up just a little bit to make sure that he has the, the frame uh, for what's coming against him in 2021 as far as defenses um, getting their licks in against him. But Ezekiel Elliott is prime with Dak Prescott returning. Keep in mind, Zeke also battled a very bad calf bruise on the back end of last season that eventually cost him at least one game. Um, but between the lack of Dak Prescott being there to threaten opposing defenses, which then put a carousel of poor quarterback play on the field, opposing defenses were focused, key, keyed in solely on Ezekiel Elliott. They won't be able to do that now in 2021. He's now physically healthy. And if the defense can match serve with the offense and protect the lead, now you're looking at being able to unleash Ezekiel Elliott on all fronts, along with Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, Blake Jarrell, and CeeDee Lamb, and those other weapons you have, Tony Pollard. So, yes, I expect Zeke, Ezekiel Elliott to have a great year uh, in 2021. And for my money, if a 1,300-yard, you know, scrimmage yard year is a bad year, you're <laughs> still not doing everything wrong there. So Zeke's going to be okay. Yeah, he'll be just fine. A few days ago, he even came out and said, I don't need any more motivation after the year I had last year. I know the type of player I am. I don't think I showed it last year. I got a lot of proof. So he's got that extra motivation on his shoulders as well. Now, you mentioned defense. They say defense wins championships. Last season, only the Texans had a worse rushing defense than Dallas. It was, it was a rough year. Did they turn it around here in 2021? 
That's the big question mark. You like to believe so. Um, indications are that they will, uh, even if you just look at who they ousted and who they replaced that person with. Obviously, moving on from Mike Nolan as a defensive coordinator after only one year, bringing in uh, a more reputable name in Dan Quinn, someone who has led a historic defense in the Legion of Boom uh, up in Seattle. Dan Quinn is now restructuring the Cowboys defense in a way that mirrors what he was able to architect uh, up there in Seattle, and that bodes well for the Cowboys. And uh, although the pick was much maligned when they gave it to Micah Parsons uh, in the first round of the 2021 NFL draft. Micah Parsons is absolutely stealing the show. He, he's taking everything that the Cowboys are throwing at him in camp and they are throwing the kitchen sink. They have him rushing as a 4-3 edge rusher. They have him dropping back uh, as a you know 3-4 linebacker and vice versa and he's just running all over the field and he's making plays to boot. So uh, a defense led by a healthy Demarcus Lawrence, the, uh, the unleashing of Randy Gregory opposite edge to Marcus Lawrence. You're talking about Micah Parsons and you're talking about another step up for Trevon Diggs, another rookie uh, who had a great year for the Cowboys, a breakout year, dare we say. And Donovan Wilson had a breakout year at safety. Guess what they went and did? They went and assigned Demonte Kazee, but didn't get complacent there. They now add Malik Hooker, former first round pick of the Indianapolis Colts to training camp to push Kazee and that safety core to another level as far as competition goes. So things are heating up when it comes to the Cowboys side of the defense. And let's, you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith, they're also in prove it years. Leighton Van Der Esch obviously under a contract year. Jalen Smith is not, but you could argue that he is because if he doesn't perform, they're going to move on from him in 2022 and use the savings that they'll gain from moving on to potentially keep a guy like LVE around with Michael Parsons and Jabril Cox. So a lot on the table for everyone involved on that Cowboys defense. The needle is pointing north. The only question is, can they keep it there? That's the question. Well, the Cowboys haven't made the NFC Championship in the last 25 seasons. Maybe this will be their year. Patrick, you're getting me fired up for the Cowboys in 2021. Thanks for joining us here on CBS Sports. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.